Welcome to rebuilding a large old twin cylinder steam engine. This is the penultimate part, part 19. Piping the inlet and exhaust and making final adjustments. Here you see the engine with an exhaust collector fitted. I made the exhaust collector with a piece of 5 8 diameter brass tubing, silver soldered to a couple of pieces of machine phosphor bronze, which in turn was silver soldered to the flanges that mount on the cylinder. The inlet manifold is not yet fully made, so I'll just go through the process and you can see it in detail. Like the exhaust manifold, the inlet manifold is a brass construction, silver soldered together. And at the moment this component is in my acid bath, which is in the outer part of the workshop. And this acid bath, or pickle bath as it's usually known, gets rid of all the residue from the flux from silver soldering or brazing. My acid bath is quite a weak acid bath, it's only full of something called Kill Rock K, but it does the trick if I leave the parts in there for long enough. And the good thing about it is that I can touch the parts with my hand without dissolving my fingers. Then it's over to the polishing spindle to polish up the part. And I don't use gloves because I like to see where my fingers are. Then I would finish off the part by hand with some brasso as you see here. This is quite labour intensive, it's a bit of elbow grease. And this of course is a shortened sequence, it took much longer than this. But in the end the component looks really nice and shiny. And when it's fitted to the engine, I'm sure you'll agree, it makes the engine look slightly better. Throughout this series about the rebuilding of this twin cylinder engine, I've been generally moaning about the workmanship, and I'm still going to moan about the workmanship. I could not let you see how I made these manifolds. It was literally holding the pieces of brass up against the engine and using a pencil to mark the brass and then drilling a hole, moving it along, looking, drilling another hole, because it could not be a precision component. It had to be made to fit the engine. The union adapter fitted to the inlet manifold is a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch union adapter. This will allow me to use quarter inch pipe which is very convenient for putting the silicone rubber pipe on to run the engine on compressed air. Now the union adapter is fitted, it's time to give it a test run. It seems to run fairly quietly, even my quiet compressor is louder than the engine which is not the norm. And what's interesting is that the bottom end of the engine is not yet really tightened up. The main bearings and the big ends are just a gentle fit. I always do it this way to avoid any picking up on the bearings should they be too tight. Now I'm testing the reversing mechanism, which in the end I had to fit a bush to because it was far too sloppy. As you can see at the back of it there's now a phosphor bronze bush fitted onto the bracket. When I speed up the engine it rattles a little bit, but as I've said many times, this is not a very well made engine. And one problem with this engine is that the eccentrics are keyed onto the crankshaft, so there is no fine adjustment. If you look back through the series you will see how badly made some of these parts are. The valves being no exception, they look like they've come from a different engine and they're both slightly different. When I was setting the timing, I was very careful to make sure that the valve travel was correct. But even with correct valve travel, the mechanics of this engine do not allow it to be perfectly even in forward and reverse. But it's pretty good, I've seen a lot worse. Time now to tighten everything up in the bottom end of the engine. It's vital not to go mad when you do this and over tighten something and shear a bolt or worse, strip a thread. So be very careful if you're doing this job, it's not a car engine, you do not need a torque wrench, just feel your way in. Do not over tighten anyway because it will distort the brasses, then you will not get a true bearing surface. It's very much an experience thing, and if you get it right, it runs like this. There is a little bit of end float on the crankshaft, but I can live with this. It seems to be running quite well. And the engine appears to be tight in certain places, so the more it gets run, the better it will bed in. A quick word about lubrication. When running a steam engine under steam, 
the lubrication is entirely different to the lubrication required when running a steam engine under compressed air. Steam cylinder oil is very thick and it's designed for superheated steam which is at a very high temperature. When running a steam engine on compressed air, the compressed air actually makes the engine very cold. If I'm using a very small steam engine, I will use steam oil for lubricating all of the parts of the engine. That's the crankshaft, the big ends, the little end and the cylinders. That's because a small steam engine gets very hot all over very quickly. Whereas with a larger engine like the one I'm working on, it doesn't work like that. The crankshaft area will be at a lower temperature, so steam oil is a little bit thick. What I actually do is mix my own. I will mix an oil using steam oil, machine oil and some rapeseed oil, which I'm told is very good for low friction. It's perfectly acceptable to use machine oil on the bottom end of an engine that's running on compressed air. Never use any machine oil in the cylinders if you're using an engine with silicone piston rings as the additives in the oil will attack the silicone and it makes the silicone very sticky. If you use just machine oil on the bottom end of an engine it will rattle a little bit. Steam oil does tend to cushion everything and make the engine run slightly quieter. Here I'm testing the valve gear and yes it notches up at each end which is not a bad thing. So really I think this rebuild is a success. What I'm now going to do is completely finish the engine. There's a little bit more painting to do and some boiler banding around the cylinders. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.